What up guys, Mike Mountain here coming at you with another episode of Pyre. So in the last episode we uh, got a new party member, Tiso, little cutie uh, drive imp, and the uh, minstrel came back as well. So we're going to continue our journey. We're in the Stinkville, flagging hands as they call it. You find everyone is feeling rather miserable. You sense just being in flagging hands eats away at one spirit. Only the imp Tiso seems unaffected. Aw, oh, most of your exiles lost minus one hope so that yeah okay suffer alongside them that's my only choice a moment reader there are several courses we may take through flagging hands if you pro choose to prolong your stay it may be worth your while however your companions spirits shall likely suffer more all right so cool fallow field can improve a talisman if I take a job there going through plague Mon will reduce the loss of hope Get a valuable item if I take a job here. I'm gonna cross a mass grave. God damn, that's intense. We're gonna do that because I'm confident in my abilities enough that losing a bit more hope shall be okay, I think. But I wanna see what this valuable item will do. The north route through flagging hands is dismal beyond reckoning. There's little talk among your group, yet you sense despair encroaching. Only Tizo seems unaffected. We lost another hope, but that's okay. So I'll suffer with him. Later, you accompany the lone minstrel in pursuit of his task here. Speak not directly to the living shade and be true to your heart when responding to its inquiries. And make no attempt to look it in the eye. I'm going to look right in this eye. The lone minstrel offers these and other words of advice as you approach the burial mounds of Cold Moat, where many exiles of the downside see their final days. Damn. Whoa, cool. What is that? A glimmer of a shade appears before you as you stand surrounded by the dead. You barely see it, and it does not speak, but you feel its thoughts piercing your heart and mind. According to the shade, the book that you possess may lay some of the fallen here to rest. The shade leaves you to your work. You tur turn through the book, locating passages concerning freedom and the spirit. You cite recite such words as seem best fit to each of the fallen you see. It is draining work. The shade resurfaces after a while, of leads you to a hollowed stump, then fades away. I found a Nox room. That's it? 50 bucks, I guess that's okay. Huh. And now I guess I continue on. Yeah. Oh, is that the next thing? I think so. The Pit of Milithae. By the time you reach it, everyone besides the imp seems to be feeling worse than ever before. Uh, you sense their desire to leave this place as soon as possible. Another hope? Dang. Alright. If they die, they never come back. <laughs> Ooh, I got a new page. Let's go to the slug market really quick. Oh, hey, you guys. You know, this place, a lot of folks, but not a lot of customers. You know what I mean? So have a look around. So I'm going to sell this. There you go. So I sold that, which is pretty good. Raises the rank, but you can only use it once. Plus two presents. Plus two hope. That's pretty good. But I think everyone's holding something already, which is two quickness. Hmm. Damn, I really want that. Two hope. Plus seven. More damage. Ah! How much is this? Six? I'm gonna buy these. Oh. Hey, I know you're gonna. Blah, 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 blah. If you want some more, I know just the individual and his dad who can get it. Catch my meaning? Just stop on by. So I'm gonna grab a couple of those. Oh, a pinch and a dash. Okay. So how does that work? Does it raise it permanently or just a bit? Let's find out. Oh, it didn't even do anything. Oh, okay, so I'm leveling up talismans. I gotcha. So we'll level that one up too. Hmm. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Cool, so I'm pretty much just gonna spend all my money on getting those. <laughs> Let's check out what the next page says. Ooh, Jodariel. Talk to you after. Let's read this next page. Okay, yeah, yeah. The Empire's collapse in the words of Golgothenian, the Master General. It was not long before the Empire began to crumble. With my liege gone, his own country quickly turned upon itself. I must admit that this collapse had started long before the Emperor's disappearance. His decision to give chase after a myth but hastened the inevitable. All the while, the rope collar stood by, awaiting such a time as he could rule in my liege's stead. Ugh. 
He would be our people's savior. His first charge was to organize a search for the missing Solium Mur. Warriors, pathfinders, and scholars heard the call and prepared to seek him out. So maybe this game is going to be longer than I think because we're only on this first chapter. And there's like two, three, four, five, six, seven more chapters. So I think this actually could be quite a longer game. I don't know. We'll find out. Let's chat with, chat with Jody. You sent Stradario's steel gaze well before you turned to her. Reader, rummaging about the wagon once again. Tell me something now that you are here. Look at me. Are you afraid of me? No. You consider the question. You've never met before. You've never before met someone like her. But do know something of what happens to those who remain in the downside for many years. Uh, yeah, actually, probably. Yeah, she. She's, you tell her in a careful way that you have done your best thus far not to cross paths with her and wish to stand her good graces. Indeed, it is comforting to know that my mere presence instills fear. One day, perhaps, you two shall grow horns if you survive this place. That day shall put the fear you feel in some perspective. Now then, I shall go make my rounds. She walks away. You feel the floor of the wagon shake with her step. She loses lose her weight. Damn, she lost one hope. Oops. Well, I mean, she is kind of intense. That's all I said. Whatever. All right, let's uh, let's commence this right. See what's going on. As you make preparations for the coming right, you wonder if the stars above will even be visible through the dense fog hanging over the pit of Millhead. Then, Tizo seems to be very concerned by something in the vicinity. The little imp disappears in a hurry. Oh, is Tizo all right? He was so frightened. He was not frightened. He was issuing a warning. Silence. Everyone, take cover. Dodariel makes quick note of several hiding places among the nearby crags and rotted husks. You wait. Something about the place dampens your senses. All you feel is a creeping dread. Then, from the shadows, a writhing shape slides forward, its hulking form draped in raiments. The shape stops. Slowly, it turns its head from one of you to the next, each in turn. Wise of ye, to, <laughs> nice, to hide yourselves from us, the little night wings, ye trespass on the resting place of the astral born. We shall see ye when the stars muster the courage to eliminate this place. The creature vanishes into the dark. After a time, your companions reconvene. That was a bog crone? So that's serpentine creatures native to the Commonwealth Southern Bogs, widely feared. Okay. Kick their asses. Easy. Indeed, that was Witch Ulmildehi of the Withdrawn. An ancient witch with an unhealthy obsession for Yselsh. Yselak? <laughs> the Astro Born Monstrosity. They've withdrawn our, their own triumvirate of bog dwellers. Compelled by sinister forces rather than freedom. Interesting. Harum. Tizo makes it clear he has no love of Umildehi. Although the rights dictate she cannot harm you bodily, with her best not to take unnecessary chances. We'll take what chances we can get in this. Everyone is time. I'm gonna kick her ass. She's done for. So I think I'm gonna go with my uh, main three: Ruki, uh, Headwin, and I just don't know how to use uh, Tizo. I don't know what's the best way to go about using Tizo. All the way to the detestable pit of Middle East. In doing so, of course, you have disturbed your ancient adversaries, the withdrawn. The deranged witch who leads them has big plans in store. Should she prevail? In oh, all but this. she won't. Now, as you know, I normally would wish you a shameful defeat. But, but in this case. I wish you a little bit of luck. Why? The crone Umildi, Umildi sees your companions gathered by their pyre. A little flame as that shall never warm ye here, much less survive the night. Hear us, Slash. Slack? So that's a monstrosity described in myths and ballads. Thought slain by the eight scribes. Make the night wings suffer. Rookie trots forward from your ranks. Listen here, you old bag. You don't scare any of us one bit. You or your buddy, you slack. Now, are we doing this or what? The question hangs in the air for longer than is comfortable. It does seem to have drawn Umildi's attention, however. Ruki begins to squirm a bit. She moves her fingers to her mask. Ugh. Foolish. You slack shall grow, you slack shall grow, you slack shall grow. He shall consume ye. Ere your little flame has died, that we shall ensure. Slides off towards your followers. <laughs> Ruki remains motionless for some time. Uh, whoops. Don't worry, buddy. Oh, she's got like a weird now square one. We shall get started. So let's see. Don't really want to use him or we use Ruki. Ruki. 
Headwind and yeah, we're gonna go with Headwind and Jodariel. Very well. The crown shall make a fierce pyramid opponent everyone on guard. No matter where you go, Slack shall find you and devour you. Why does she have a weird square? It's kinda cool. Alright, hustle, hustle, hustle. Oh shit, I dropped it. Can't catch what you can't see. Ah, you fried him. Damn it, okay. Gotta play some heavy D. This isn't good. Okay, now I'm okay. Fuck you. Ah, oh, no. Oh no! Damn! That is indeed an unauspicious start. Let's hope that we don't have an inauspicious continuation. There we go. Attaboy, Rookie. Just fly on in. And fuck this guy up immediately. Ooh, no. But fuck him up, anyways. And now this one. And, ooh, what happened? Oh, I got rid of them all. Nice. And Jodariel got them, so that takes him out a lot. Noise. Alright, Rookie. Did I get. Oh, I got both of them. Nice. Ah, oh, I didn't think. Didn't see him. But that's okay. I just fry him here. There we go. Go this way and a bit more and fling that. Yeah. And a boy, Rookie. Jump. Yeah, slam dunk. Glory dive. Noise. The lifeblood of Uslax, it flows within this lair and beneath this world, his lifeblood, it shall engulf, engulf ye in such blackness and despair. Oh boy. Oh, so I can't touch those spots, I guess? The witch invokes a profane name, I shan't repeat. Best beware of foul sources. Came up there. Nice. Oh! Yes. There we go. Okay, alright. This will be interesting. Jump. And jump, and I'm dead. Damn. Seems kind of unfair. What are those things? Okay, hustle, hustle, hustle. Can't catch this, can't see. Damn it. At least they saw me. Where the hell is Rookie? Uh oh. Oh, Rookie's gone, I forgot. Shit. Damn. Alright, well, we're still in good shape. Just gotta get one good one. Okay, that wasn't one good one, that's for sure. Aura, thank you. Okay. We hustle a bit. Uh, fuck. Toss that over there and... Oh, fucking hell! This is actually kind of hard. They actually did step it up for me. But not, not a chance. Another jump. Come on, run, 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 run. Yeah, slam dunk. No, I missed. Give it up that. And slam dunk. Noise. Whew. Okay, that was actually a little <laughs> closer than I thought. They proved superior to their adversaries. Yes, we did. We're the great. Right is complete. See, those bog dwellers are just a bunch of hissy talk. Nice work, everyone. Never thought I'd have to stand against a bog dweller. It would seem our adversaries failed to unnerve us. Islak, we have failed thee, and the deed shall be repaid in blood. As for ye fools, ye shall be consumed, and everything around ye, from the soil to the stars, ye shall see. Okay. I can't see where... Okay, she leveled up. Focus training prowess, the path towards survival on the blood border. These rights make similar demands of us. Bigger presence. Or more presence, bigger aura. Or... Ooh, that's a pretty good one. Um... Having a bigger aura is pretty, pretty handy. Nice and rookie. That rookies not too old to learn new tricks. <laughs> Faster, stronger, and a little better, little better looking too. I mean, is there anything I can't handle? So bigger aura, or hmm, what does this do again? That's the aura, right? Yeah. Um, 
That's probably a good one to have. Sorry, May. Sorry, Imp. It's interesting. Oh, right. I gain inspiration. Okay. Okay, I got you. Until the stars align. All right, so that one actually, you know, like I, I, last episode I was complaining that it was a little too easy, I felt, but they're starting to step it up. I like it. That one was actually, you know, a challenge. I, I had my TPK a couple times. Total, total party kill. Having secured victory over the withdrawn and a solid performance, you and the others have some moments to recover from the ordeal and relative safety of the black wagon. So when can we get out of here? Wait, or what, Greentail had enough of Mildy's hospitality for the time? Oh, Jody, yeah, thanks, I'm good. The reader and the star shall point the way as ever. It's just, so far, we've kept on going north. If that's the case again this time. The Sea of Solus spreads north and west from here, an impossible oceanic expanse pockmarked by crude little islets. Islets? I don't think I've ever pronounced that one. Attempts to sail across the drowned sea do not turn out so well. So it spreads north and west from here for untold leagues. I could not tell you when last a vessel dared to sail those waters. Tizo asserts himself during the conversation. What does it matter, little one? He's trying to get us to look at something outside the wagon. Reader, please go see what he wants. You excuse yourself and follow the imp into the dark of night. Do I find a boat? You find May and the lone mistral already gazing up at the stars. Can you not read the stars yourself then, Mr. Mistral? I fear it is not so simple as matters of can or cannot when it comes to me, May. We shall see what the reader has to say, for this is his charge. And here he is, in fact. Thank you for fetching him, Tizo. Tizo is happy to have obliged the lone minstrel. Reader, it would seem the skies have cleared to some extent. Please, look upon the stars and see where they compel us to go next. Alright, so where's the next place we're going? Keep going up? No. Ooh. It's kind of... Those guys look scary. So it is more north. Or is the Azure Star. The Azure Star burns bright over the ruins of a lost frigate in the Sea of Solis. So it is in the water. Cool! What the fuck is that? So the rest of them won't like that. The rights beckon you still further north toward the middle of the Sea of Solis. That's not good. You're joking, right, chum? Does the reader seem the joking type to you, Greentail? We do not argue with the stars. You talk like we can just go right out, ride right out into the water. Pardon my interruption, though perhaps we can. Say what? My client, Sandalwood, he has a way of anticipating such eventualities. West of here lies a place called Big Bertrude's. <laughs> a small bog-dweller bog outpost, outpost at the edge of the sea. Ugh. Some of it fatal if touched or inhaled, damn. The proprietor is an old companion of his, she may be able to assist us. Hedwin smile returns. That sounds like our best shot right now. Let's pack up and move as soon as possible. Interesting. Ooh, who do I chat with now? The minstrel. Greetings, reader. It's good that you are here, for there is something I wish to tell you privately. Do you have a moment? I shall not keep you long, though I know your time is precious. Of course I'm going to listen to that. Why wouldn't I? You bid him to continue and make clear your interest in whatever he has to say. Very well, and thank you for your time. And, I should further note, matters that pertain directly to the rights I must reveal to you alone, for thus I am obliged. In any case, when you confronted the withdrawn and witch in Milty, you might recall she intended to invoke a certain name. Slack. The astral born. I hesitate to say it even now. You would be forgiven if you took the ravings of Milde from your nonsense. However, her words, as it turns out, ring with a certain truth. Before the union of the eight scribes, when first they found themselves here in the downside, this land was even less hospitable, if that can be believed. It was ruled over the greater. It was ruled by the greater titans, colossal monsters that once roamed the downside. The scribes slew them one by one and through this forced their bonds. The one called Eslash with the. Islak was the eldest and most fearsome of the lot. Just the same, the scribes managed to defeat it. They later used Islak's own hide and ichor, ichor? to bind the Book of Rites. Why doesn't that one have a definition? <laughs> that one's new to me. However, Islak did not truly die, but for by some accounts, it seems to be incapable of death. The creature is regenerating even now, though very, very slowly. Its vows to devour this land and everything in it. Only then can it return unto whatever plane that banished it to ours. So in a way, it is an exile just like you. If ever the creature should be reborn, it shall be many ages hence. Thus the ravings of Milde are more or less inconsequential for the while. Yet the history of Islak is inexorable. In oh my god. It's linked to the rites, and therefore must be known. I trust your research of the book shall lead you to discover more in time. I hope all of this is of some reassurance. And now I leave you to your more immediate concerns. 
I shall go check to see how everyone is faring at this time. He heads out into the evening, bidding you a good rest for the evening. Whew, that was a, a mouthful. So, I am essentially Islak. That's all I gathered from that. We're both two of the same. I'm a little better than him because I can read and he is a monster. But otherwise, that's the twist. That's the ending. Ooh, Big Birchers. What a name. So, well, that wasn't very... Well, actually, I guess everything is a lot farther than it seems. This is the place. Let us go to see my client's companion as soon as you are ready. No one to talk to in here, eh? Nope. Okay. Then, yeah, let's, uh... Seek Big Bertrude. <laughs> oh, she's not very big. Big Bertrude's is a sickly gathering of bog dwellers who stay within shadows. You can feel their eyes surveying everything. The lone minstrel steps forward. Sandalwood sent us. These words are enough to make the bog dwellers snap to attention. They emerge from the mud and dark and begin expecting your black wagon with their strange tools. Ew. Kind of looks like Medusa. One of the bog dwellers slithers forth. She is larger than the rest and leaves no doubt that she commands the others. Thou speakest the name Sandalwood. We would know his whereabouts. Reveal them to us. Good day to you, Big Bertrude. Hey. It is a pleasure to meet you at last, for Sandalwood always spoke highly of you and your handiwork. <laughs> did he? Did, did he? In turn, we must. We know who thou must be. Yet thou speakest of the past. Sandalwood, doth he yet live? Speak plain and quickly. To be quite frank with you, madam, I do not know for certain, for I have been apart from him for some time, carrying out his will. Though I have every faith that I, Sandalwood, lives. As for his current whereabouts, I understand that he awaits for us somewhere near Walkingwood, beyond the waters. A labyrinth of a forest on the western half of the Black Basin. If you know the way around it. The path of the sacred Mount Alodiel lays far behind these suffering, suffocating woods. Interesting, I would like to see like a giant map of this. We wish to seek him there, though as you can see our wagon is ill-suited for the task. The one called Bert Bertrude frowns at this, studying the lone minstrel all the while. Nee. Indeed, then leave us, return at dawn. That is all. By your grace, Big Bertrude. Big Bertrude. The name doesn't fit the character. The lone minstrel turns away, but Hedwin stops him. Hold on, are you sure about this? Leaving the wagon in their care? All should be in accordance with my client's plan. Keep calling Sandalwood your client. He must reward you well. I, in a manner of speaking, he helped me find a sense of purpose I thought I lost. Hedwin nods at this and then turns to you. Well, my friend, I guess we'll see what happens, right? I'm off to let the others know. You find yourself with time for your vocations. Oh, okay. While the bog dwellers go about their business. Study in private. Forge resources. Mentor a companion. I'm going to mentor. Hmm. I'm going to mentor Hed uh, Hedwin. Sure thing, friend. I appreciate you off the offer where to begin. You sit down with Hedwin to go over some of the subtler aspects of the rites, such as the state of banishment and how to return from it. He sense he's beginning to understand. Boing! Yes. Level up. I used to think the scribes were just the stuff of stories, but all of this... This really is their doing, isn't it? And we're going to get... He jumps into them, he banishes them. Wider, longer line. Yeah, that's pretty good. Noise! Banishment during the rites. I suppose it is to remind us of our exile, isn't it? Sweet. I don't know what actual banishment must seem like. Like, they just go stand off at the side and, like, count down. And, like, okay, now I can come back in. I don't know, but I'm, uh, I'm gonna cut this here. So, uh, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think so far of this game. I'm enjoying it. I hope you are, too. But I will cut this here, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.